Well hello Disc Golf family and welcome back to T-Box Media's round 2 coverage of Topo Nui Atea Classic North Island Championships. I am Jake Brennan and with me in the com box, Mr Henry Pearson again. Jake, uh, great first round to kick things off here at the North Island Championships. We move across from the Topo Golf Club to Spa Park just over the road at a permanent 18 hole layout which is one of the picks of the country. If you were to come and play around in New Zealand, this might be one of the places we would highly recommend you go. At par 61, um, plenty of par 3s and a couple of par 4s. Uh, this track is a beaut. Um, beautiful conditions on the day, 21 and sunny. A little bit of clouds and not a lot of wind to speak of. So some scores could be in the lower end of the spectrum. Jake is our first member on the card, a good first round, and very consistent for you for a guy who usually has a few bogeys in his round. Only one in the first round to card at 4 under, 996 rated first round. Right behind me is Mr. Mark DeKeefe, the wiry guy who's been there and done that before. Uh, Mark with the iconic throwing grip, you can see that again in the, the throwing key eye. On the card as well, Levi Stout, he was with us in on our feature card round two, shooting two down. Uh, not hot by his standards, so he'll be looking to uh, put a little bit better of a score together. Um, and running out our feature card also from coverage on round one, Jay Watkinson, one of the more formidable names in New Zealand, uh, tends to place in most of the events that he competes in across the country, the 2022 national champion is here in Taupo. We move into hole one. It's a par three, 132 meters. Bit of a long bomb down this open fairway. The left hand side of the fairway is out of bounds. On the right here is the most significant obstacle on the hole, which is a large, very green tree um, with a mando left. And once you navigate around that tree, the players push up to a basket, nestled on top of a ridge, a very long forehand or a turnover backhand is required to get something into the circle. Jack, to lead us off, what are you throwing on the hole, Jack? That's just my T-Bird 3. Um, being a backhand player, I just thought, look, you don't need to try and birdie hole one, just get the par and, and move on to hole number two. So I threw the shot and then just walked away. It's a pretty smart thing, I think. Um, it'll be interesting to see because both you and Mark are almost forehand exclusive players. Yeah. Well, I think Mark and I, um, we, we talked a little bit. We think uh, disc golf should be played backhand. You know, this oh, is, backhand only. This is forehand rubbish out there is, uh, is no good <laughs> for anyone. Right. And that favours you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And Mark and n not many other people. Uh, probably Max as well, as right. we've seen in round in round one. So right. maybe three of us could get on, get on a card and design a course. Right. So all this work I've been doing on my forehand is going to be for nothing if you get on the PDGA board of directors Absolutely. within the next 24 months. Levi going roller here and what we didn't talk about it there is OB long and wow he brings that into play with the roller and he just didn't quite curl up in time so Jay between discs on the tee he's thinking forehand he's one of those kind of people Levi and Jay probably have long enough forehands to push into the circle on this hole yeah um, one of few in the field that might have that sort of distance really surprised that Levi didn't didn't crank on his forehand on that one I, I don't know if it's just first off the tee or he just had roller in his head or surprised with his play there if that's got the distance it could be on a good angle it cuts off a little early and he'll just be at the base of the mando tree and we're off for round two probably a good kick there for Jay I mean if I think if that pushed I think it would have missed well, we just said that you were a backhand only player, and what on earth is going on here? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. Accident. Sorry. Was that not a forehand, Jack? That was a forehand. Um, 
I'll try not to throw too many more many of those. I'd like to apologise on behalf of Jake to all the uh, two-way players and forehand-only players in the world for uh, his uh, ridiculous outburst before about backhand-only um, disc golf. Given he has just shown us that he is uh, a bit of a hypocrite when it comes to that kind of <laughs> rhetoric. Levi here. Jake, any, to... <laughs> sorry, anything to add there before we just, we before we move on? Just a topic change. I mean, right. <laughs> I, look, hey, if I'm throwing forehand, I'm I'm not playing very good golf. I um, it's definitely not a forte of mine, and I'll I'll blame everything. I'll blame the disc. I'll blame the wind. But yeah, everything except my form. Jack, what I will say is that that forehand looked reasonably serviceable. I don't know if I can say anything more complimentary than that, but that is pretty good. <laughs> I think. <laughs> at this stage given thank you Henry thank you all circumstances we Here move we... forward to hole two this is hole two uh par four 156 meters really creative hole I think I I'm, I'm a fan of this kind of design hole where you need a nice tee shot and it you play for position here so anything that you can pump straight for about 90 to 100 meters is going to be great OB is long so you can't get after your disc too much most players are going to throw a, I think, a mid or a fairway and try and put themselves in position. If they push a little bit further right, it just does open up the gap a little bit more to access the pin. The pin is located up this little tunnel shot here. In previous years, it used to be a little bit shorter, but now they've pushed it back and made it quite special, um, I think. And they've, they've put it up on top of this uh, this log that they've cut down and that fell down with the cyclone. So. I think it adds a little bit more to the hole. So just to give some of our international viewers some context, roughly a month prior to this event, Cyclone Gabriel raced its way through the uh, Upper North Island and uh, decimated parts of um, Auckland, Taupo and the Hawke's Bay. And Spa Park was no exception to um, incurring some damage as seen here on uh, the green of the second hole but um, the Topo Disc Golf Club and uh, its membership base have done really well to adapt in light of those circumstances and what a nice silver lining to have this beautiful green here Jake on hole two. Absolutely and, and just as you said Topo Disc Golf Club putting in the work after the cyclone um, myself and Aidan Barnes um, from Auckland came down a week before and we witnessed some of the work they were putting around the course and and there was a number of them and they were putting in the work there was chainsaws there was there was brooms there was rakes there was everything so so I think well done to Steve Lawson and the, the Taupo Disc Golf Club um, making it one of the best courses in the country as you said before Jay going straight up the guts here and playing that money as he said off the tee so that's just where you want to land. Yeah, the further up you push on this hole, the better look you've got down that channel at the mouth of the green. We did see some alternative plays here, very aggressive plays in years past on this hole. Andy Davey has been known to throw a really ripped forehand up to the mouth of that green and challenge the OB long and left. And likewise, Justin Workman um, decided that his tournament play here would be a backhand roller um, that would uh, turn and carve into the mouth of that green late but both incredibly aggressive plays on this hole and what do you know Jack for the second hole in a row you're gonna eat your words and throw a void yeah it just it just seemed like the play Henry um, I'd like to consider myself a two-way player come hole two <laughs> <laughs> That uh, statement you made on, I'm sorry to return to it, but it just seems silly well, now must. not to discuss. Look at you both. This is ridiculous. It, it, it seems silly really not to discuss those remarks that you made on the first hole about uh, disc golf becoming a backhand only sport. Only to witness you throw two holes in a row of reasonably serviceable forehands. Um, Jake, I might offer you now an apology, uh, an, uh, an opportunity <laughs> to give the viewers your own apology. Yeah, I mean, 
it's these course designings designing these courses from the left to right that really forces us into throwing these shots so uh, it's really faults to them really right i see i felt a bit better seeing mark throw a forehand as well um <laughs> You're as bad as each other, you two, oh, and uh, absolutely. Mark left with a super challenging upshot here. So from the tee, you can just see all those trees in the way and no real clear line. And you can see the big guy just sort of leaning out and kind of fighting way through. But I suppose that's good from where he was. At this stage, Mark and Jake have both thrown more forehands on this hole than backhands. That looks like a Tui. That is a Tui. And that is another forehand, Henry. Very tidy little up from there. Very pinched on that left hand side, so you've done quite well. So the players will traverse a couple of holes here in the wooded section of Spa Park before we enter a long stretch of open holes lined by character trees. And the real challenge around this course is on two, three and four to navigate through that section of the course uh, without significant damage to then put yourself in a tour position to take advantage of the open stretcher holes that follows. Jay taking a breath in there. He wants this. Yes. If you remember back to yesterday for those viewers that watched round one, Jay was just a little bit off on the putting green, so really nice to see him cash his first one. And a great up and down from you, well done to secure your par. And the boys will tidy up, Mark, with the only blemish on hole number two. These elevated baskets, these tap-ins are never really tap-ins. They're, they're, they're something else. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I don't practice on, on raised baskets or anything like that. So they always feel a bit nervy. Mm. Hole number three is a par three at almost 100 metres. This is one of the more challenging holes on the course. Players have to uh, pitch something down this very tight hallway. There's a couple of sneaky lines that you could move through uh, either left or right of the main channel. Um, once you get past the BT, which is roughly 60 metres ahead of the um, championship tee, the fairway opens up slightly and players will have um, an opportunity to pitch up to a wooded green from 30 meters in. The tee shot is uh, the separator on this hole and if you can get something away clean and down that first 60 meters then you're in with a chance to save par. Birdies here are rare. And Jay to kick things off with a T-bird 3 in hand. hits the tree there and gets a horrible kick to the right but I did question his disc collection going such a, a high speed disc and so high I mean the risk of getting a kick and kicking one way or the other way I think was just really high from, from Jay. So I take it then you've gone the other side of things and picked something very low speed. Putter low and slow and just play for par up the middle. That's a beautiful shot. I think you and Levi have the same idea. They both look like RPM 2ies. Although Levi looking like he's got a bit of a longer rap. Uh, still very smooth though, out of the hand. He's taking the pro gap, but still getting quite a lot of distance. I mean, I think on this hole, if you take, you take distance over anything else, and if you get it, fantastic. Mark also going with a Tui as well. His one about 15 years older than mine though. Here's the first tree but he'll have a, he'll still have a look at the basket. Jay going with the same disc. Ooh. 
this is jail. Wow. Henry, sometimes on these holes, when you're in that position, you're just like, all you're asking for is proceed forward. And if, and if you go in the right direction, you're like, that's a win. And you just sort of got to take your medicine, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. This is playing as the second hardest hole on the course with good reason. There's a lot of uh, obstacles to navigate from tee to green. And like you said, taking your medicine really is sometimes just the wisest play. Jay here after two shots still left with 35 meters or so. Yeah, look at him just sneaking through the back door. That'll be a pretty close putt for him. It's very tidy, Jack. Well done, you'll have a chance to save your par for three and play the hole exactly as you described earlier on. Par golf, boring. So this is a quite a strong MPO field. You've got three of the highest rated players in the country in Levi, Jay and Jacko. Formidable long-term forces in the game here in New Zealand and Simon and Mark and then a few newcomers to the sport who are rising up the ranks yourself Jake Francis Orange Joseph Berry all contenders at this highly contested MPO field and just why our um, our cards tapping out here I mean I think you forgot to add yourself in that zone there Henry I mean making your your way up the field and um, I can't imagine there were too many birdies on that hole, uh, but I do you know anyone that birdied that hole, Henry? Well, that's very complimentary of you, Jack, because I think that you're alluding to the fact that I birdied hole three, which, yeah. is, which was a particularly nice birdie, and there were only five birdies on the day. Five birdies on that hole? Yeah, which I think is pretty outstanding. In I years think. past, we've gone through two or three rounds and only had one or two birdies total. Yeah. So myself, yeah. Joseph Berry, Simon Feasy, Francis Orange, and Connor Yard all nabbed the two on hole three. Hole four, uh, in my opinion, not too much different. Still plays as a par three, but there is lots of trees in the way here. So there is two lines. The drone is going up the left hand gap here, uh, which players will throw straight for about 40 meters and then just try and get through really. I mean, look at these gaps. I mean, everything's tight. The drone's having a hard trouble and the hole still goes and it goes and that's how it can feel when you're playing it sometimes um, once again proceeding forward is good and just try and get as close to the pin as you can and hit your shot um, henry i'm sure this um, hole ate a few people's lunch this hole played as the hardest hole on the course for the day at 0.35 strokes over par interesting choice of yours to go down that right hand lane it's not the most common route on this hole given the mando late is so close to that lane that you tried to push down why did you decide to pick that side as opposed to the left practice round i threw five shots at each and the right hand gap was i got further down more times than i did on the left hand gap so i said look it's tough either side um let's play this one and I think if you hit a tree, you've got a better upshot from the right hand side. But hey, everyone's everyone's a bit different on this and you know, there's no right or wrong answer, I don't think. Mark looking for the left hand gap and it looks like he pushed quite long and that's going to be really good for him because long and deep, um, it, it wants for starters its distance, but uh, it does open up about it there. I think your point you made Jake about there being no right answer on this hole is a very good point given how difficult it is to navigate the obstacles on this hole we've seen three different types of shots off the tee a backhand down the left a backhand down the right and Jay's forehand down the right but it all really is a bit of a luck fest I think this hole 
and returning you are to that forehand that you're leaning on here, zone in hand. Oh, hard luck. So holes three and four together played as the artist on the course, but good separators they were because you've had roughly half to two thirds of the field get a birdie or par on these holes and then the remaining third of the field was bogey or worse. That's outstanding from Jay to go that long and if you were with us in round one I talked about Jay's beat and envy and that thing just, I don't know what it did, it just sort of crept its way through the trees and managed to sneak its way into Jay's putting range and gave him a chance. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch our round one feature card MPO coverage from the Taupo Golf Club, uh, then be sure to check back at uh, T-Box's uh, recent uploads for that coverage. It was an exceptional round from Maxime Tange uh, in round one and well worth a watch. He put on a bit of a clinic, didn't he, Jake, on the golf course? Absolutely, and and it could have been much more if he, his putter was on too. So. Go back and watch Max um, do things with his force that most of us just dream about. For all T-Box Media coverage, be sure to subscribe to the T-Box Media YouTube channel for coverage of all of the upcoming events, particularly in the North Island, but um, across New Zealand as T-Box expands its horizons. And how good is it just to get like talents like Max on T Box Media and and um, just us commentating on it and and the younger players uh, playing with Max. I mean, I don't know if I can consider myself one of the younger players anymore, but <laughs> I won't reveal your age, James. But I seem to can agree with you on that, <laughs> that observation. And I'm not playing with Max, so yeah. you know, just yeah. I mean, given Levi's still in high school and Jay's pretty much just left high school, <laughs> not quite. I, I'm not sure that you would be consider yourself in that quite sort of company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mark's probably just out of high school as well. So, <laughs> um, I do consider myself the dad of the card. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we joke about Mark being just out of high school, but he is aging very well for a man of his stature. Absolutely, yeah. As he taps in his par. Here we go, um, coming back, hole five, once again, another par three. Um, in my opinion, one of the more gettable par threes here, 112 meter uh, hole. Most players are gonna play out to the right-hand side, hyzering in, but there also is this technical straight gap that you can throw if you wanna throw straight at the pin. The only real challenging um, thing on this hole, I think, is the guardian trees in the way, and the basket is on a bit of a slope, so, um, you either put it close and make your putt, or do you run it with the hill in the background and risk the roll away? Um, Henry, what was your play on this one? The right hand side of this, um, of the approach to the screen is very open, so I think you'll see a lot of the players, including myself, throw a wide um, overstable driver that's attempting to skip up towards the basket. This is a great line to begin with, but needs to be a bit uh, more overstable, I think, to push left. Yes, but like Levi definitely pushing a little bit long. and I think he just, as he came off the tee, he said, ah, the headwind uh, from memory. And um, you can sort of see the first little flag there just fluttering back towards us. And then Mark going, and Mark doing <laughs> the same thing and pushing long. I think they were just having a bit of a distance big competition. Big. Yeah. I don't know where to go yeah, from. Same. It's crazy. Too big. So Jay disking down to his T-bird.
This looks a little inside. Yeah, I'm just catching that tree, I think. Sort of overcorrected from Mark and Levi there. He's had a good little roll though to the edge of circle, so should have a look for his birdie. Jake, what's your pick here off the tee? This is a new Calvin Heimberg destroyer that actually I got from the Winnow shop uh, last week and I said I wasn't going to throw it, but it's a pretty disc. <laughs> I do remember you picking that up actually the other day. It's quite a pretty um, colorway, that white and blue. Oh no. If that settles, that would have been nice, but an outside look for your birdie. I wondered how that got to there. I, d I didn't think it was there off the tee, and then it was. So, beautiful conditions we're experiencing at Spa Park here for day two, round two of the North Island Disc Golf Championships. This being played at the sort of the conclusion of New Zealand's summer at the end of March, and roughly at the conclusion of the 2023 New Zealand tour season. So players like Jay and Levi in particular who are vying for the top spots in the tour points rankings will be eager to secure a good finish here at the North Island Championships uh, to boost their rankings on the uh, on the tour points. Oh, good catch from the basket there, Levi just giving that a bit of a steer down yeah, before he ran that in. Three pars and a birdie for our chase card. We move forward to hole number six. Hole six is a par four, it's 168 meters, a slight change from last year's uh, layout. The tee pad's been pushed back an additional 30 to 40 meters and been created, it turned into a par four. Players are throwing a distance driver on Heiser um, approximately to the base of this hill where the line of trees begins. Um, after which they'll be left with a 40 to 50 meter approach shot up the hill to a basket perched on a very precarious ledge with a big drop off down the back. Um, so although it's short there will certainly be some knee knockers uh, amongst our group um, playing it slightly short and in the circle of this basket is wise. Anything long runs in danger of rolling all the way down the hill. And when you say drop off at the back, Henry, you mean drop off at the back. It is it is a long it is a long hike down there. It's a seriously downhill angle for a good fifty or sixty meters, and uh, which doesn't make for a very nice approach shot up the hill. And Jay putting that long off the tee on the full. I admitted that there is OB around that area. The entire um, rough area at the back of the fairway and up to the right of the basket is all OB. So he may have found himself skirting with it off there off the tee. He obviously didn't listen to your whole breakdown. So fair enough. Mark with a great line off the tee. Maybe a little shorter than he'd like, but it's still pretty sharp. And what are you throwing here? Um, throwing a nuke. Um, I didn't actually realize I was throwing a nuke until um, I watched this footage back, but I think just something stable, driver, and then finish somewhere over there. Uh, maybe another 10, 15 meters would have been nice. That's a little short, but um, we'll make do from there, I think. Yeah, you see here, if you don't quite get that distance where Mark is, now you've got these guardian trees to contend with, which really forces you to hit a shot angle as you approach the green, and I think it's always a little bit dicey. Yeah, Saying that, Mark puts it up there, but he's just outside the circle. He'll have a decision, of course. So Jay did find the OB, and this is his meter in, and now he's looking to throw his upshot and 
pushing a little bit long down the hill. Probably got quite lucky to pull up there in the middle of the hill. Now in recent years, Henry, there was no backstop um, for the hill. Um, now that they've got that bit of a mesh thing, so it sort of stops you at the 20 meter mark, but I remember last year there was no mesh and I actually seen someone roll the whole way down onto the road, which is, it's probably nearing 70 or 80 meters to the bottom of that. Mm. Levi and Jay, both very talented up and coming New Zealand players um, who are going to be making a splash on the world scene uh, this year in June and July when they travel to the United States to compete in the Junior World Championships and Amateur World Championships. Levi, I think, also entered into the Dynamic Disc Open, um, which I think is at Emporia. Country Club, Eric McCabe design, very wide open, similar to, to the golf course that we experienced yesterday on Feature Card. That would be cool having some New Zealand players represent us over there. Um, I'd tune in and watch for sure. It's been a long time since we've had um, players over there. Simon Feesey might be the only one in recent memory who was at the Beaver State Fling last year, but uh, COVID obviously put a bit of a dampener on our exchange program here we go hole seven par four 175 meters um, once again beautiful hole uh, you can sort of see this funneling valley as it sort of just wants to take your disc forward there is ob uh, on the left and on the right however if you punch straight to where those um, two larger pines are in the middle of the fairway that's the ultimate landing zone and the pin is tucked further forward and up there on the left as indicated by the arrow um, just a good disc golf hole really like it requires two good shots and a good putt really to get the birdie Levi challenging the OB on the left and oh, he must be a couple of meters from it. That was a tee bird too, if you heard the exchange between Jay and Levi off the tee, which is a seven speed fairway driver, and he's really put a move on that. It's a good 115 down the fairway. Mark, by contrast, I think it's just thrown a kahu into a spot that's even shorter than uh, Levi's tee bird. So perhaps it's the elevation change on this whole jack that allows for a slightly slower speed disc to be thrown at such distance by Levi. Oh no, you've carved that over. Bugger. What'd you throw there? That was a destroyer, which that destroyer has never flipped on me before and it decided to flip today. Muscle man, is that what it is? Jay's done it as well. <laughs> Jay's turf that. He's come up very short. He's got a long way into the pin. So he's got a decision here, whether he gets aggressive or he just lays up. And with a halo destroyer in hand, it looks like he's made his mind up and is going to give it a crack. And that's way too straight. <laughs> yes, Jay. That is OB. Just got to get up a little bit. Pretty good. You'll have a look at least to save your par. So I think disc selection off was off a little bit there. I would have, I should have opted for a faster disc, I think. Jay with a much better angle as he approaches the green. And that's nice. This is another hole that has uh, changed a little bit um, from last year. Originally the uh, par four was straighter, uh, but now they've sort of pushed it back and taken it far more to the left. And I think it's a great adjustment for um, a tournament layout. It makes definitely makes the hole more challenging and it makes you think a lot more. I tend to agree that OB there too. The left off mark is a new addition on the hole as well. It just makes for a slightly tighter tee shot. Um, the placement is 
uh, on one's mind a little bit more than it had been in previous years so a great change to the hole in my opinion Jake to save his four very close indeed Jake you're starting to trail off the pace just a little bit now at this stage with a double bogey on hole four and a bogey now on hole seven at this stage in the round how are you feeling about things um, my putt wasn't feeling too good. Um, I know anything can happen on holes three and four. Um, so the double bogey there, I, you know, it, it can happen. Um, but just nothing's really coming together with a string of pars. Um, yeah, a little bit frustrating to be honest, but I think I didn't really want to push it too much. Mark with a very tidy birdie after a good drive and a great second. And we will move forward to another par four, hole number eight. At 164 metres, a great downhill tee shot off this elevated tee. Um, the real key to this hole is pushing your drive far enough up into the woods line to give yourself a good look at the um, approach to a green nestled kind of in the woods area um, yeah another ch this is another hole that has changed originally it was a little bit flatter but i really appreciate the the elevation change that spa park offers and and just the incorporation of of the trees that i've got around the park and like what a cool shot like it's a lot of fun i would it's one of those courses that you would come back and play again and again and I'm quite excited to see how Taupo Disc Golf develops, particularly with the like the youth in the area. When you've got a park of this caliber, um, where you sort of see what happens to Queens Park with with Levi and and uh, um, what's the park in Christchurch? Is it uh, Jelly Park? Jelly Park, that's the one um, with Jay. Um, so, I mean, in another year, few years' time, we could be talking about another youngster emerging out of Taupo, which um, yeah. It's exciting for disc golf in New Zealand. Yeah, Jake makes a great point in that a lot of the emerging talent in New Zealand is coming from um, communities around the country that have centrally located uh, disc golf courses. Um, in the Cargill with Queen's Park, as he mentioned, is um, case in point. Um, this Taupo uh, Spa Park permanent layout that the boys are playing today is no less than five min minutes drive away from the central city um, in Taupo and the Taupo Disc Golf Club has a particularly passionate member base um, and relative to other clubs around the country so possibly um, in lieu of rallying around such a beautiful and accessible course um, in their city. We don't quite have the same feel in Auckland do we Jake where you and I are from it's a bit harder to go and play disc golf in in the biggest city in the country for sure those people around the area will, will know what we talk about um even in wellington a little bit when when you have to drive 30 40 minutes to the course it's it's totally different when you can uh just go for a round after work or a round after after school <laughs> um, in some of these cases um and then you end up playing three or four times a week and it's just it's just so different than only playing once or twice on the weekend um and just the community feel that, that goes around with having a local course. Um, Dunedin's got it, Wanaka's got it, um, and I'd, I'd love to see Auckland develop something like that in the in the future. Get in. Get in. Beautiful height to that disc. It really did have a chance at uh, rattling the change. Jay throwing three. So Jay's hometown of Christchurch, the largest city in the South Island, is known around the country as being the sort of hub for disc golf activity, um, with multiple courses located in and around the central city, and a tremendously big uh, club scene down there. And a new course, uh, Jake, that's just been installed down there, Bottle Lake. Um, 
which is uh, has a tournament coming up, but we'll talk about that in just a jiffy. So back to the action we come. Hole nine, par four, 170 meters. Just another fun hole, sweeping hole, uh, downhill shot off the tee. Um, what players want to do is push a straight shot um, somewhere in the region of 90 to 100 meters and then a hyzering out to the left. Um, there is OB long and there is a cliff long. So if you get your drive flipped up and turned over, um, it's bye bye disc. Uh, the pin location is not this pin that you see in front of you, but um, in my opinion, one of the most iconic and um, picturesque greens, not only in New Zealand, but in the world. And it's um, one that most people should come and play and and tell me if you agree with me or not. But you might be able to see it in the image here. As you, as you sort of come out, you get to see the river in the background. And I think anytime you're playing disc golf with water in it, it's absolutely amazing. So first up to the tee, Levi. This is one of the more picturesque holes in the country, as Jake said, and at this time of year it is in full glory with uh, greenery and sunshine all about. Now just as Mark steps up to the tee here, Henry, you talked about uh, the new course that's coming up in Christchurch. Whereabouts is that popping up and when is that uh, playable for all the uh, disc golf fans down there? Yeah, look, Jay Watkinson, our, one of our players here on the feature card, he and his family and friends have put together a brand new course in Christchurch at Bottle Lake Forest, uh, which is poised to be one of the more um, beautiful layouts in the wider Canterbury region. Uh, they are set to put on an opening tournament uh, at the beginning of April, the 1st and 2nd, uh, which will be attended by NDG Media, uh, our good friends at T-Box from um, Europe. So be sure to check out that coverage and uh, give our friends at NDG um, a bit of support as well as they continue their tour of New Zealand, Bottle Lake being their final stop on their tour, Jake. Bottle Lake is supposed to be one of the premier courses um, in Christchurch and I think it's great that it's designed by um, a player of, of Jay's calibre um, and you, yourself being very kind there and um, speaking of Jay's um, involvement in it as well but obviously yourself and Winnow being heavily involved with uh, the the development of the tournament. Oh that's not your best line, that's that a bit unlucky. Not a good shot Henry. Oh hard luck sir. And I found the OB um, not super happy with that approach. So the tournament that's coming up, the inaugural 2023 Bottle Lake Open is a fundraiser tournament. A portion of the proceeds going towards development of the course to turn it into a, a permanent basketed layout with uh, tea pads, baskets and all um, and the other portion of proceeds is going to support Jay Watkinson's uh, USA travel to the Amateur World Championships in United States Amateur Championships in June and July so great courses 100% of the proceeds raised from that tournament are going towards that pair of courses so a special event it'll be um, at the beginning of April So for an absolutely beautiful picturesque green, I find this one super intimidating to approach as, well, you can just see me finding the OB there and a few of the players um, dicing with the OB on the right. Um, but yeah, if, if you make it, I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. Excellent touch there, Jack. Your flick forehand has become increasingly better throughout uh, the round and perhaps over the last couple of weeks and months. Well, it only really gets used in tournaments. <laughs> it doesn't get practiced in the field, <laughs> which is probably something that should change, actually. Yeah. Um, 
I suppose the more tournaments you play, the better you get at disc golf, but that's true for everything, I suppose. Mark, perhaps distracted by the serenity in the background as the other boys tap in. Jay with a very tidy birdie on the ninth. So this hole will bring us to a close on our opening nine of the second round at the Topor Nui Atea North Island Disc Golf Championships here in Topor, New Zealand. The boys are roughly the same as what they started at, Jake, a couple of back from uh, where he began the round, but with the back nine still to come, there's plenty of ground to be made up just yet. Thank you, Henry. Look forward to seeing you all on the back nine. Final look at scores for the front nine. Mark, with one down, he leads the way in the group at uh, four down total. Levi and Jay poised for a good back nine at two down apiece. And Jake uh, you trailing them just by one with negative one. We'll see you for the back nine of the Topol Nui Atea Disc Golf Championships. Round two coverage coming right up here on T-Box Media.